Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with another topic, another circuit, which is the non-inverting amplifier. We have seen so far the voltage follower and also examples in the inverting amplifier using an operational amplifier. In this case, we will look at the non-inverting amplifier and this will be our first example. Of course, we will work out the calculation step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the following electronic circuit given that is an ID low amp as shown here. So we have the VS which is 2 volts DC voltage R1, 10 R2 is 40 and we have also a load of 50 ohms. What we want like to calculate is the voltage gain which is from the source to the load. So the load voltage is shown here. So load voltage over the source voltage and also the value of that load voltage itself and also the current delivered by the op amp which is shown here so this current we need to know okay how to work it out let's look at the solutions let's first determine the condition of the of the circuit we know that the op amp itself has two terminals which can be then made equal to each other due to negative feedback so due to negative feedback this node v minus and this node V plus will be equal to each other. That is just due to negative feedback. If you have a positive feedback, for example, from this node to the positive input, there is no guarantee that the V minus is equal to V plus. Now, we know that V plus is now also Vs because it is just directly connected to that one. And that is also V minus, so that means also this voltage here is also Vs. So that is a new information we have now from this condition. Now, for the ideal op amp, it is always the case, it doesn't have to be a negative or positive feedback. It is also in no feedback, just an open loop configuration. The currents entering the op amps are zero. That means this current I plus and also this current I minus are zero because the input impedance or input resistance is infinite. So that is actually an ideal open circuit here. So I plus and I minus are both equal to zero. Now, for the first case, the voltage gain A sub V voltage is then load voltage over the source voltage. So, let's then do step two is write the circuit equation for this circuit. Now, we can develop the Kirchhoff's current law at node P. That's shown here, so I just named that node P. Now, before we do that, we can first also assign the current, so the plus and the minus sign in this formation. The current low, uh, will then flow from right to left, in this case also from down to bottom. So this is also the current direction, so the I1. And also we have the load current which goes down in this format. So what we have then is the following. We can say this I2 will now produce I1 and I minus because the current goes in this direction, I2. It splits in I1 and I minus, but we know I minus is zero. So we can say I2 is equal to I1. This is the conclusion actually from this analysis. We can apply voltage divided rule at this node since this is uh, no current flow here. So we can keep it or consider it as an open circuit. So we can say this voltage here will be then split in a part here and another part there. That means the voltage at this node P or V minus will be R1 over the total res resistance C by this VL. So that's actually shown here. Okay. We know then the Vs is also V minus and V minus was of course V plus. That's why it is Vs. So we can just say, okay, that is also Vs. So Vs is equal to R1 over R plus R2 times VL. And this is already something interesting here because we have the Vs and also the VL in this expression, that is also where you are actually heading, we need to have the ratio of the load voltage and the source voltage. So, if I now multiply the left and the right hand side of this equation by R1 plus R2, that is the denominator of this right hand side, I get this expression, left and this right. And if I now work it out even further, say VL over VS, then we'll get R1 plus R2 over R1. This can be further simplified because we see a summation of two component, uh, two values or two parameters over this parameter R1. Then we can do R1 over R1 plus R2 over R1. That will be then 
1 plus R2 over R1. This is now an expression for this specific circuit, the simple variation of the non-inverting amplifier. You see, it is a plus, so it is a not inverting, so non-inverting. And it's always 1 plus something. So we can, of course, make this close to zero or exactly zero if you make the R2, for example, unity or just a wire. So you will have always 1 as the gain. You cannot make it uh, less than, let's say, 1. So 0 0.6, for example, is not possible just using this circuit. Okay, now if I now substitute the values 40 and 10, so 40 for the R2 and 10 ohms for the R1, 1 plus 4 over 10, that will give me then, 40 over 10, I mean, that will give me a 5. So the voltage gain for question A is 5, plus 5, so not a minus. And you have seen, of course, this circuit also in the example for the simple inverting amplifier. There we got minus 4, that was an inverting uh, operation. Okay, let's move on for the next situation, which is a load voltage. Now, since we know the gain, we say VL over VS is 5. And we have the VS, we can just write down this in terms of VS, the VL in terms of VS, so 5 times VS. Now, 5 times 2, that will give you exactly 10, so plus 10 volts. So we have also a dish node plus 10 volts. Now, the next one, current delivered by the op-amp, which is then this current, which will now split actually here in I2 and IL. So we can now set up the equation there also, Kirchhoff current low again at this output node. I op-amp is equal to IL load current plus the I2. Now we need to now be very careful because this I2 is equal to I1. That means this whole branch is a series connection of R2 and R1. So it is not actually splitting in this direction. So you can see it as a parallel branch of RL, RL, the load, and also the R2 and R1 together. So if I want to work out this IL and I2, I have VL, which is the load voltage, over RL, that is this current, and we have VL over the total resistance seen by this voltage node, which is then, of course, the two resistors here. So that's like why we have R1 plus R2. Now, if I now substitute the values, we have 10 for the VL and 50 for the load. 10 over 10 plus 40, so the resistor values for the R1 and R2, you will get 400 milliamps exactly. And you can see it is also a plus. That is also the reason why you have a plus voltage, so you don't have sign inversion. All right, now we have now also calculated the current for the operational amplifier it delivers here in this circuit. Now, these are the results. We all collected them together. You see the gain is 5 plus 5, the voltage, uh, load voltage is 10 volts and 400 milliamps for the current delivered by the op-amp. Let's also look at the simulation result. This is the circuit we have uh, seen here and that is now drawing in the simulator. You can see the 10, 40 ohms and also the 50 ohms. You can see here this current arrow will measure the current in this branch. It's 400 milliamps exactly plus. So it is exactly uh, also verified here. And also 10 volts at this node. You can get more information if you look at the table. So this is the exact same circuit, but then you generate a table of results. You get more information. You can see also the nodes, node 1, node 3, 0 is always the ground. So there is also 4 here, etc. So what you see is the following. There is node 3 here. This one, it says it is 2 volts. But node 1, which is also 2 volts here, so it is exactly equal to each other. Why? Because due to negative feedback, the op-amp tries to make its inverting and non-inverting uh, inputs exactly equal to each other. So if this is stick to or uh, reference to 2 volts, then this must be also 2 volts. That's actually shown here. So this is just due to negative feedback. This is the action of negative feedback, the result. Now we also see here the 10 volts the VL, that's this one, and we also see the 400 milliamps here. So everything is actually clear from this simulation and it is verified that we have the correct calculations done. Now let's now see also this in the actual simulator, so in SPICE, and discuss there how we can generate this table and also these uh, values. So let's now jump to SPICE simulator. All right, we are now here in the SPICE simulator. This is the circuit we have just discussed. Here is the R1, 10 ohms, R2, 40 ohms, and a load of 50. This is the op-amp. This is an ideal operational amplifier, so there are no power supply uh, nodes given, so it is just assumed to be ideal. It is done to it do its job. 
And this is now the voltage source we have of 2 volts. It's a DC voltage source. We measure here the current, I mean the voltage at this node, so VL. So you can get from meters, you can see a voltage pin here. You click on it and you can just give it a different name and then connect to it, the node you want to measure the voltage. With respect to, of course, the ground. This is the current arrow, also to measure the current in a branch. You can do that also from here. You can also use an ampere meter, that's also possible, but it is, I think, a little bit easier to see also in the analysis and also when you simulate the results. Now, this is now the current arrow. Now, let's then do the analysis. You go to the analysis, DC analysis, and then do calculate nodal voltage. That means actually everything which you have put in the circuit as a measurement, you get it directly in the, on the screen. So you can see 10 volts for the output voltage, load voltage, and the current delivered by the op amp is 400 milliamps. If I click on, for example, a component with this pen, and it will be highlighted in red here, you can see it's associated current, and I mean voltage and current. It's also shown here. So this is then also bit in going in a different direction. So this is oriented in that direction. That's why we have a minus here. You can also look at this one. So this plus 200. So you can see actually this current and this current is actually exact same. And so that's also the reason why we don't have any voltage, I mean current here. Let's also look at this voltage. It is 2 volts, you can see. And this voltage is also 2 volts. So that also confirms that these two are equal to each other. We can see that also in using tables. So go to analysis again, DC analysis, and go to table of results. Now we are here. These are the results. So let me expand this. So what you get is then the following. If I now look at v, VP3, which is then the voltage point 3, which is 2 volts. So if I now click on it, it will be highlighted. See, it's red. If I click on this one, which is then the 1, which is of course VS2, it's also 2 volts. So that really proves again, confirms that these two nodes, 3 and 1, are equal to each other due to negative feedback. Now, if I look at this node, it is then 10 volts. So that is actually your output voltage. All right, guys, this is for this example about the simulation of this very basic non-inverting amplifier we have seen using the DC analysis and also table of results. That our calculations are correct. We can see the 400 milliamps for uh, current delivered by this op-amp and also the 8 volts at the load voltage. So we have now everything verified. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. On this channel, you can also see another separate playlist about the electric circuits where you can practice, see how we use the methods like node voltage analysis, mesh current analysis, and also superposition and Tefan and Norton, all those methods we apply in these uh, let's say electronics electronic circuits see you next time another video take care